Um, hi, everyone. Um, first of all, I would like to thank AAA and uh, the University of Hong Kong for presenting this amazing conference. Uh, I learned a lot from the past session, and uh, the topic I'm going to present today is mass media as an exhibition site. Uh, Beijing Youth Daily and the 1994 Interior Design Art Proposals Exhibition. Uh, when talking about the key role that art media played in constructing the discussion, debate, and publicity for contemporary Chinese art after the Cultural Revolution, it seems natural to mention several significant ones that officially approved in the 1980s, including Art Manly, Fan Arts in China, The Trend of Art Thought, and Jiangsu Pictorial. In a relatively loose political and cultural atmosphere brought by the reform and opening policy from the end of the 1970s to the late 1980s, these periodicals were influentially involved in the nationwide uh, art movement, the 85 Art New Wave, along with the intellectual and cultural movement was later called Culture Fever in which China opened to West literature and philosophical thoughts after a long period of isolation. In this process, the art periodicals undoubtedly became an important platform to introduce the experimental art practice and exhibition of uh, young artists to effectively organize information exchange and dissemination and to publish um, theoretical articles and reviews written by young critics and theorists. Due to severe control over the art exhibition channels by government, to Chinese contemporary artists being published in art periodicals will receive greater effect than being showcased in an exhibition for the former could reach a larger audience beyond the small art circles. It is noteworthy that many of uh, the periodicals editors were also young art critics, such as Li Xianqing, Gao Minglu, Pi Daojian, Liu Xiaochun, etc. Um, as art history students or young teachers, their writings often ensure the academic authority of these uh, periodicals. Um, beyond the editorial practice, they gradually developed wide networks in the industry as well by correspondence, traveling around the country to visit individual artists and art groups, and collecting documentary materials. Um, although the particular notions of curator or curating did not yet appear in China, Chinese art scene then, such networks uh, provided essential conditions to enable the editors to initiate their, uh, to initiate their curatorial practice. Um, in this regard, their most momentous outcome would be the China Avant Garde Exhibition in 1989. Uh, to some extent, China Avant Garde revealed the fact that in a specific period of China, exhibition and media of contemporary art had a symbiotic relationship. Thereby, they had a possibility of forming a natural alliance in which the editors and critics were maturing alongside the artists. Firstly, the previous theoretical discussions in the art periodicals served as academic endorsement of China avant-garde. Um, secondly, all the exhibitions needed at least one sponsor unit usually refers to an official institution as volunteer that should be responsible for all the issues regarding the exhibition. Uh, in the case of China Avant Garde, seven institutions, including Art Manly and Fine Arts in China, participated in as uh, sponsor units and were, all, and were all accused and penalized afterwards by the official authorities for the tolerance of uh, performance arts during the exhibition like uh, Zhang Nian's performance, uh, sorry, like uh, performance art like this. Um, but um, uh, lastly, even the slightest change in the political climate could uh, affect both art and media ecologies. Instead, it might be more feasible to seek support and protection directly from the open-minded officials within the system. In a word, the survival strategies of art periodicals and exhibitions in the 1980s clearly reflected the hybrid state of both conflicting and interactional between official and unofficial artistic practice in China. 
However, the socioeconomic context changed radically after 1989, with the military suppression of the students' and citizens' protest movements in Tiananmen Square and the rapid restoration of order that followed. Purely humanist, humanistic enthusiasm and idealism, which considered as the zeitgeist of the, of the 80s, were proved to be powerless and unsustainable. Disappointment made the artists and critics lean toward nihilism and escapism. From the late 80s to the early 90s, more than a thousand young artists and art critics left the country to realize their personal value abroad. In contrast, their colleagues who remained home had to cautiously maintain a low profile because of the restrictions exerted by the culture policy. As a result, for Chinese art scene, the 1990s is a decade that showed dual characteristics. On the one hand, it is a decade that contemporary Chinese art artists began to attract international attention and were becoming a part of international art community. Well, um, by appearing in major exhibitions, on the other hand, these artists were still hard to gain domestic acceptance, no matter how popular they were among foreign art circles. So here's a, a photo showed the first time that contemporary Chinese artists participated in Venice Biennial in 1993. And we can find uh, several familiar faces that which will soon be became the big names in the industry, such as uh, Fang Lijun, Xu Bing, Geng Jianyi, Wang Guangyi, and uh, this is Wang Youshen. Uh, he's a figure I will uh, mention frequently later, and we can find Mr. Li Xianting in the front row when he was much younger then. Um, so, the root cause of this situation was the lack of exhibition opportunities domestically. Uh, you can see Wu Hong's description on this situation here. Well, another crucial cause that Wu Hong doesn't point out is the low energy of official art media at that time. Uh, you can also see a dis description below. Uh, at this point, the most urgent task of contemporary art exhibition was not only to serve for the artist's basic human rights, but also provided a crucial means to challenge the official control over art artistic dissemination in the public sphere, through which, hopefully, contemporary art could achieve the legalized statutes in China. A prevailing view among Chinese art circles in the early 1990s was that art could achieve autonomy and independence from the high pressure of politics through the intervention of economic power. Um, the pra practicality of this option was reflected especially after Deng Xiaoping's famous 1992 Southern Tour during which he showed his explicit attitude of promoting economic liberalization all over the country. In this regard, the previous symbiotic relationship of exhibition and art media began to take on new dimension with the expansion of fledging market. At the time, almost every art periodicals had a column on the, on the art market, but still the art media failed to promote contemporary art to a broader cultural field. It was this reality that has made the mass media stand out from the industry. Compared with the art media, the mass media in the new era had capacity to introduce the contemporary art in the field of popular culture to develop the public awareness towards it. Thus, to a certain extent, except the isolated state of contemporary art as well as the market economic reforms swapping the editorial and circulati circulating strategies of our media. From 1992 onward, the mass media took different measures to carry out reforms in order to increase readership and circulation so that they could be more competitive to get revenue from advertising and other business activities. So the the above background forms the basis that frames this research. As an exhibition unconventionally took place on newspaper, 1994 Interior Design Art Proposals Exhibition and its carrier, 
Beijing Youth Daily together provided a good example to illustrate the new transformation of the symbiotic relationship between exhibition and media in the mid in the mid 1990s. Established in 1949 and relaunched in 1981, Beijing Youth Daily, short for BYD, began life as the official newspaper of the Communist Youth League Committee in Beijing. In 1991, BYD became a commercialized newspaper by launching market-oriented supplements to boost ad advertising revenue by setting up the Little Red Cap as this distribution company and by expanding its business into other areas. Um, in this process, the visual transition of this paper became a crucial part of its brand building, which could be attributed in large part to Wang Youxin's joining in the editorial team as the first art editor in 1988 after his graduation from the Central Academy of Fine Arts. With the help of new typesetting techniques, Wang, uh, Wang Youxin spearheaded BYD's visual transition and designed a new layout uh, with a system of visual markers and striking pictures to make the newspaper more eye-catching. This layout was so iconic that it was soon widely known as the style of busy eyebrows and large eyes in Chinese media industry. In 1994, the cir circulation of BYD remarkably reached uh, 400,000 copies. To Wang Youxin, the meaning of being an art editor in BYD is far more than just a job. With an open-minded management and energetic editorial team, in fact, it encouraged him to use his potential with multiple identities. From 1988 onward, Wang, Wang Youxin worked as both art editor and content editor. In, 1980, uh, in 1989, he used a full-page center spread to report China avant-garde exhibition initiating the gallery section focused on visual art that continued for almost 20 years. This was really rare in mass media at the time. Uh, and Wang Youxin's institutional affiliation also played a very important role to facilitate the new generation exhibition in 1991, in which Wang, Wang Youxin contributed as both participant artist and executive curator. As an artist, Wang Youxin's own work also benefited from his job. It promoted him to aware the production, distribution, consumption, and influence of mass media in a society. Therefore, his practice in the early to mid-90s often utilized newspapers, in most cases were BYD, and related images as a medium and he emphasized the conceptual intervention of the audience than their bodily participation. It is fair to say that Wang Youxin's efforts con connected BYD with the development of contemporary Chinese art. But the main exhibition channels of contemporary art in the early 1990s were still irregular, private, or closed shows whose audience were mainly artists and their friends or foreigners that, uh, who were interested. How to forge new exhibition channels and develop them, them into regular sites with broader audience had long been among the fundamental problems in contemporary Chinese art. In this context, 1994 Interior Design Art Proposals exhibition could be considered as an experimental attempt of utilizing mass media as an alternative site to expand exhibition channel as the de facto curator of this project. According to Wang Youxin, his motivation was to open up a new space in so-called print media to display and promote contemporary artworks. Uh, we can uh, 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 explain this later. Uh, the changes that economic reform brought about also reflected by the title of this exhibition. While private real estate was abolished during the Cultural Revolution, the hottest commercial items in the 1990s were houses and apartments, accompanying the wide, widespread enthusiasms of interior construction and redecoration. 
Many graduates of art academies open companies in this new field, and Beijing Bo Yuanhua Trading Company was one of them. In 1993, Liu Bo, the owner of Bo Yuanhua Company and also Wang Yousheng's close friends, uh, contacted Wang Yousheng for sponsoring a promotion activity in BYD. To resonate with the main business of Bo Yuanhua, Wang Yousheng then proposed a year-round project in gallery section, as you see, um, uh, including two parts, uh, the art proposals exhibition and the standing column art for everyone. Um, to Wang Yousheng, it was definitely a win-win collaboration that BYD, Bo Yuanhua, and his uh, artist, artist peers all could benefit. But from the beginning, the ex exhibiting of contemporary art was not Wang Yousheng's sole consideration. A proposal Wang Yousheng written to get appro uh, approval from the management of BYD clearly shows his aim of uh, engaging this project with the public by asking the readers to respond to selected 20th century masterpieces. From Wang Yousheng's point of view, the experimental aspect of art proposal exhibition and the classic aspect of art for everyone column could be an interactive and intertextual com combination when they appeared in the, on the same page of the newspaper. And we can see Bo Yuanhua's logo here. Uh, meanwhile, for 1994, uh, interior design art proposals exhibition, Wang Yousheng invited uh, curator Li Xianting as the academic chair, and then inv invited 12 ac active artists to participate in, including Li Yongbing, Wang Guangyi, Ni Haifeng, Wang Luyan, Gu Dexin, Yang Jun, Zhang Peili, Geng Jianyi, Wang Jianwei, Song Haidong, Li Qiang, and Chen Shaoping. Each artist was asked to submit a proposal of interior design and would be published one by one monthly for an, an entire year. In the invitation letter Wang drafted to this artist, he listed very detailed instructions for the artist, as you can see here. And uh, we can see it's very interesting that uh, he uh, emphasized that uh, uh, political or sexual elements are, uh, cannot be acceptable. Uh, the artist also received financial support. According to the approval forms that BYD issued to Wang Yousheng, the total amount that uh, Bo Yuanhua sponsored was uh, 40,000 uh, RMB. With uh, 1,000 RMB for each artist, the 12 sketching proposals were all collected by Bo Yuanhua at the end of the year. Yet, rather than embodying the middle class aesthetic taste of interior decoration, from today's uh, perspective, the 12 proposals would be considered as the ones of experimental installations which showed the conceptual as aspect of each artist's practice and were nearly impossible to realize in a public exhibition at the time. Although Wang Yousheng su suggested that the artist should make the designs based on an assigned photo, only Ni Haifeng and Zhang Peili followed this instruction. Coincidentally, their drawings made the space look like a cage or a pr prison cell with iron bars, while the other 10 artists chose their uh, own dwellings as the reference, thus inevitably revealed parts of their personal lives. Li Yongbin's propo uh, proposal, Home Sweet Home, published in January and was the only one out of 12 that realized at his home in Beijing. He used the printed clothes on the walls, the lampshade and with sprouts growing on the floor to drive out the coldness of the concrete space and fill the room with energy of life. He employed a conceptual ex ex expression of what home is that more or less implied his state of being single. While Chen Xiaoping's proposal that uh, shows his happy family life with kid by adding various facilities in his dwelling, such as children's slide, mini bar, and even karaoke room. 
In contrast, Song Haidong's proposal art studio is just a simple sketch of his own studio with few details, which was like a metaphor of Song's hesitating in her heart that if he would quit his artistic career or not at that time. Well, um, 1994, uh, art proposal exhibition also provided an opportunity for the individual artists to unfold the aspects that are different from their usual uh, practice and ways. As members of the new measurement group from 1989, Gu Dexin, Wang Luyan, and Chen Xiaoping were always work collab collaboratively in order to get rid of individual authorship. Therefore, the individual works they showed here were very rare. Uh, as for Wang Guangyi, he proposed an interior storage with shelf holding four containers covered by news uh, photographs of current events. Compared with his uh, famous style in the early 90s, the great criticism series, he creates a totally distinct artist language here. As an immaterial exhibition, 1994 Interior Designer Proposals exhibition was not an isolated case contemporaneously. It occurred the, alongside a series of similar exhibitions, unrealized projects, and uh, unofficial publications, such as the first Han Manuel Art uh, Proposal exhibitions in 1994, the Trilogy of Underground Publication Series, Black Cover Book, White Cover Book, and Great Cover Book, initiated by three artists, are, uh, Ai Weiwei, Zeng Xiaojun, and Xu Bing, and 1994 Chinese Contemporary Artist Agenda, edited by Wang Luyan, Chen, uh, Chen Xiaoping, Wang Youshen, and Wang Jianwei, and two exhibitions curated by Geng Jianyi. Uh, together with the about projects, 1994 Interior Design Art Proposals exhibition reminds us to revisit the, the emergence and development of conceptual art in China and relocate its position in contemporary Chinese art history. Even in the 1980s, conceptualism already could be traced through activities of Xiamen Da Da uh, and Pond Society, as well as through the works of individual artists such as Huang Yongping, Zhang Peili, and Geng Jianyi. By employing unconventional art media, they emphasize the artist's ideas over the objectification of art making to indicate the purpose of discarding of narrative and figurative methods, therefore completely reject to the commercialization of art. The 1991 garage show took place in Shanghai was always considered as the first conceptual exhibition organized by artists which uh, reviewed different artistic taste and aesthetic pursuit. Correspondingly, 1994 Interior Design Art Proposals exhibition shows the same efforts that uh, artists made in Northern China. The proposals help to redefine artistic cre creation as the working of the artist's mind and its dissemination through mass media provided a vital means for conceptual artists to communicate with one another. This kind of practice appro approach also provided new modes for projects that the artists could work together in different time and locations, which carry forward by exhibitions such as uh, the first International Facts Art ex Exhibition and Wildlife in 1997, thereby formed a cluster of self-organized activities that constructed a more specific understanding of localized conditions uh, surrounding the produ production and reception of contemporary art in China. And the most interesting part, I think, in this project, sh uh, this project shows is um, uh, that the theme of uh, this exhibition, interior design, somehow echoed with the reality that contemporary art faced in, uh, at, the, at that time in China. And uh, no matter how old or ugly the facade of the architecture or system is, Chinese people could always create a new surface or space inside uh, the system and to live and breathe freely. Thank you. This is my presentation.